are Slade and Michael, and we're playing the Indie Hack. We find ourselves once again following Abel, Hand of the Three Ladies, an exorcist, as he trudges through the swamps of Kalax Nur. He's just left a couple of Swamp Clan hunters and their newborn child, and he's just completed a massive battle with some kind of demon creature. Now he finds himself on the road again. After several days, he finds himself in a small piece of civilization in this otherwise barren swampland. So there are several small huts and a few separate small plumes of smoke going up into the sky. And you see a few bodies moving around as you approach. Uh, um, probably ready my sword, pull it out of the sheath. Probably tired, kind of, ugh. Oh my god, hopefully these people, hopefully these people don't understand the language at least. Start walking in. Sounds good. As you approach, you realize that all of the members of this village are men. All of them have a shaved pate. They don't have the scarification that you saw with the Swamp Clan, so you're thinking they're maybe a different group. Two of them stop what they're doing, uh, stand up, sort of straighten up, walk towards you as you're coming in. They look thin, almost gaunt. They're wearing very minimal clothes, like just a sheet kind of draped over them, their bodies. I stop. As, as I see them acknowledge me, stop, raise my hand. Like, hoe the camp? They both simultaneously do a a gesture where they put both hands over their mouth. Taking the chance that that's the proper thing to do, I return the gesture to them. They they seem a little bit confused. Uh, but (laughs) but, But they wave you into camp and direct you to a uh, small stool by one of the fires. Yeah, no, I'll walk in. They sit down around the fire also. As we're sitting down, I try to introduce myself. I'm Abel. Uh, again, they do the, the hand gesture over the mouth. Um, a little bit of nodding. They don't have stools. They just sit on the ground. Okay. Weird, but okay. I gesture toward uh, the food and kind of the camp. Them trying to get a response out of them. Uh, they kind of nod along as you're gesturing, but not a word. You haven't you haven't heard a single word since you entered the camp from anyone. There are maybe half a dozen of these similarly dressed and looking men uh, wandering around, doing their I, daily activities. I lean in close and speak very quietly to one of them and say, "Have you all taken a, a vow of some kind?" Or- not talking or no speaking there's a bit of a moment of recognition and he begins to nod and has you know he has wide eyes and he's nodding is it forbidden to talk what should i not be speaking uh then he kind of rubs his head and then does the covering the mouth gesture again i'll try to keep it down i guess and he Uh, yeah he, he pats you on the shoulder and um just kind of bows to you a bit Okay. I probably have been doing some minor hunting. You know, pull out the last of my rations. Probably swamp goat lizard jerky and uh, sure. kind of show some of it to them. Okay. Yeah, they, they nod along and, and, and look at it sort of impressed. Like offer some to them. Uh, they bow very deeply this time and accept and uh, break, break, it, break it into some pieces and, and share it. Uh, the two of them. Yeah, I look at them like motion for like something to drink. So then one of them goes somewhere out of sight and comes back with a a small clay cup of water for you. I uh, kind of incline my head like, thank you. But then I'm like, oh, he went behind that place to get something. (laughs) (laughs) Does it look like just clear water? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll take a little sip. You know, it's, it tastes about as good as any water you've had since you entered the swamp. Okay. 
As he leans back after handing you the cup of water, he notices your wounds and leans in a bit and tries to inspect them. Yeah, I lift up the shirt and let him see, or lift up the armor and let him see the deeper wounds. Whoa, okay, so his face turns to like the most pained face you've seen of anyone not being physically injured. Um, he is very distraught and upset. <laughs> yeah, like, yes, it does hurt. He's choking down some kind of violent reaction from his stomach. So let's remind people what injuries you have. I had a lacerated kidney. Yeah, I just have my sundered shield. That's all I have written down. Okay, well, the wound that he sees, this lacerated kidney, is fairly horrendous. And, yeah, he's... I, I remember the, uh, yeah, the, the, the demon claw going inside and being stuck inside me as I tried to break its arm off. Uh, so he gestures that you should come into this little hut behind them, where there are two other of these shaven fellows sitting. No, I'll follow him. I leave my uh, pack and everything, but uh, keep the sword on me. Yeah, they don't seem too worried about the sword. So he leads you into this little hut, and there's a bit of incense, you can tell, burning in here. And there's a bed of reeds. He invites you to lie down on it. The two men that were initially in the, in the hut stand up to come to look at your wound. Yeah, no, no, I'll kind of uh, shrug my uh, armor off uh, over my head, going slowly, and then uh, kind of turn and let them see it. Okay. They give it a good look over, and they also gesture for you to lie down, uh, with the wound kind of facing them. Yeah, I, I go ahead and do so. They have a few little jars. They put it into kind of mortar and pestle and grind it up mix it with a little bit of water and apply this paste to your wound which initially stings like the demon claws are re-entering your body but after a moment you get a kind of tingling numbing sensation as if you've been chewing on like a clove spicy tingling yummy um <laughs> I kind of try to look and see what it is, see if I can recognize smells or anything. I mean, it's got a very sort of acidic, pungent smell to it, but you don't recognize what they've done. This is some kind of hedge magic or herbalism of the swamps that you're not familiar with. Familiar with. I, I thank, oh, thank you. Thank, thank to both of you. So at this point, you begin to fade in and out of consciousness. <laughs> Kalex Nur is not a good place to be falling unconscious, but uh, I usually no. I, I, I'm thinking these guys aren't so bad. Like, why would they try to heal me and then put me to sleep? But right, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, I like kind of uh, let myself go into unconsciousness. Hi, this is Jason from The Gauntlet. If you enjoyed this episode of Comic Strip AP, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. We have many other Comic Strip AP shows available, each organized in their own sequential playlist for easy listening. Just go to youtube.com and search for Gauntlet RPG.